Welcome to your report of findings. This video is intended to help educate you about the function of the spine, the purpose of chiropractic, and to help you understand what normal and abnormal x-rays look like. In addition, we will also review the services offered here at our office. The hope is to have you better prepared for your next visit when we will be going over your x-rays and to help you better understand why your doctor may be recommending the services that he is. So let's start out with a review of the anatomy of the nervous system. We know the brain is the master controller of all functions of the body. The brain sends electrical impulses down through the spinal cord. Branching off the spinal cord at each level are nerve roots. The nerve roots continue branching out, going to all parts of the body. We know the brain is protected by a hard outer casing called the skull, and the spinal cord is protected by the spinal column. When looking at the spine from the back view, as we are here, the spine should be nice and straight. Any lateral or S curves in the spine are called scoliosis. From the side view of the spine, we can see some curvatures. We'll talk more specifically about these curvatures later on in the presentation. We know the spine is made up of several small bones called vertebrae. These vertebrae are stacked on top of each other and are separated by discs, which are the shock absorbers between the vertebrae. Nerves branch out from the spinal cord and exit between each of the vertebrae through small spaces. Any pressure on any of these nerves or nerve roots can create symptoms associated with the path of the nerve. In this illustration, it shows the C6, C7 spinal segment being compromised. This can create pain in the neck or the upper back area, but it also can create radiating or radicular symptoms into the shoulder, into the arm, the elbow, the forearm, the wrist, even into the hand or the fingers. This next slide shows impingement in an area in the lower back or the lumbar spine, which can create low back pain but also can create radiating symptoms into the buttocks or gluteal region, down into the thigh or the hamstring region, into the knee, the calf, the ankle, and even into the feet and the toes. These symptoms can be as varied as muscle spasm, tenderness, numbness, tingling, cramping, and of course, pain. This chart shows where the nerves exit the spine and go to the organs of the body. Oftentimes we just think that misalignments in a vertebrae, putting pressure on a nerve can create pain and spasm and symptoms like those, but we don't often think that the organs can be compromised as well. In fact, we know that nerves connect to every organ, tissue, cell, and system of your entire body. Any misalignments of a vertebrae, which pinch or constrict the nerves, are called subluxations. These subluxations can create a multitude of symptoms many of which you may be experiencing at this time. So now we're going to take a look at some x-rays. We'll look at some normal x-rays and some abnormal x-rays so you have a better understanding when you look at your own x-rays. The first x-ray we're going to take a look at is a lateral or a side view of the neck or what we call the cervical spine. In the cervical spine there are seven vertebrae and we use C from cervical and number these C1 to C7. The first thing that we want to look at is the forward curve that we see in the neck. In this particular x-ray, the person is facing to our right. You can see the jaw on the right and the back of the skull on the left, and you can see how the spine curves forward. This is called a lordosis. We can measure the angle of that curve, and as we put a line across the top of the vertebrae and the bottom vertebrae of the cervical curve, the angle should come out close to 43 degrees. The head also should be resting over top of the shoulders. We don't want the head moving forward. We use a mark from the skull and drop a line straight down. That line should intersect right in front of the C4 vertebrae and be less than 10 millimeters. In this particular view, we're seeing it's 6.5 millimeters, which is very good. The other thing we look at are the spaces between the vertebrae, which we can see here. These spaces in between each of the vertebrae should be nice and equally spaced out and no degeneration. Those spaces are where the discs are located, so any decreased spacing in there could be degenerative disc disease. We also look at the front part or the bodies of the vertebrae. 
these vertebrae should be nice and squared off as we see pictured here. And there should be no lipping or spurring on the edges of those vertebrae, which we call osteophytic formation. The next view we're looking at is also of the cervical spine on the top, but then we also are seeing the thoracic spine towards the bottom where the rib cage is. There are 12 pair of ribs and therefore 12 thoracic vertebrae, T1 through T12. When looking at an x-ray from the back view as we are here, the spine should be perfectly straight. Any S curves again are called scoliosis, and this next picture shows a case of very extreme scoliosis. We're seeing curves of 51 degrees here and 36 degrees here. And again, that is very extreme. The next x-ray we're looking at is a normal lateral lumbar curve. The lumbar uh, vertebrae are those in the low back, and there are five of those, L1 to L5. In this picture, we're seeing the belly would be located out front here. The buttocks would be in the back here. We're seeing the hips located down here. The tailbone or the sacrum is located right here. And then we have the five lumbar vertebrae sitting on top of that. Again, what we're looking for is a normal forward lordosis of close to 43 degrees. We're also looking at the evenly spaced discs between the vertebrae and of course the vertebrae themselves being nice and squared off as we'd mentioned in the cervical x-ray as well. The next view we're seeing is the lumbar, the low back uh, view from the back view, just as if we're standing behind someone looking at their low back. So we're seeing the hips here, which is comprised of the femur head and the hip joint itself, uh, both on the right and left. Uh, we can see a line drawn from the top of one hip to the other. That line should be level. The top of the pelvis should be level, and again, the spine should be nice and straight. Once again, this is an example of scoliosis. In this particular x-ray, we will notice that the left femur head is almost 13 millimeters lower than the right femur head, which drops the pelvis down on the left side, which is causing the spine to curve to the left. There are many different causes of scoliosis, one of those is an imbalance within the pelvis as we're seeing pictured here. This imbalance could be caused by one leg being shorter than the other, problems with the knees, ankles, or even imbalances within your feet. If there are curvature changes within the spine, whether it be a scoliosis or one of the lateral lordoses has straightened out, this can compress the disc and over time lead to what we call subluxation degeneration. There are four phases of this, and I'd like to go over it with you on actual x-rays to show you what those look like. In phase one subluxation degeneration, we see a loss of the normal curve in this particular x-ray. Again, if we were looking at a posterior view, we might see a scoliosis. In this case, the neck has lost that normal forward lordosis of 43 degrees and is actually reversed at a minus four degrees. At this point, the disc spaces are still nice and equally spaced out, although we do see quite a bit of forward head carriage measuring almost 32 millimeters. Remember that number should be less than 10 millimeters. If nothing is done to help this person get the head back over the shoulders and begin to restore that lordosis and remove areas of subluxation, then it will begin to degenerate and we will move into phase two. Phase two subluxation degeneration may look like this where we're seeing areas of degenerative disc disease and osteophytic formation. And you can see that pictured here between the C5 and C6 vertebrae, where the disc space is degenerated and there's lipping or spurring on the edge of the vertebrae. If nothing is done to help this person, another 10 or 15 years may go by and we will move into phase three subluxation degeneration. This x-ray is showing phase three subluxation degeneration. Here again, we're seeing the loss of the normal cervical curve and a forward head carriage, but now we're seeing many more areas or regions being affected. In this particular view, we're seeing areas between C3 and C6 showing multiple areas of disc degeneration, again, lipping or spurring or osteophytic formation on those vertebrae. If nothing is done to help this person, and another 10 or 15 years may go by and we'll move into the last and final and worst stage, which is phase four subluxation degeneration. 
In phase four degeneration, we're seeing multiple levels again being affected, but at this point, we're barely seeing any disc spaces at all. We're also seeing these huge spurs on the front of the vertebrae here, uh, multiple areas of osteophytic formation and the vertebrae actually beginning to fuse together. Unfortunately, at this stage, we're unable to reverse or correct any of this, and we can only manage to help the person with the symptoms that are involved, which oftentimes are many. There are three goals of treatment for all patients who enter our office. The first goal, of course, is to get you out of pain. To do that, we will be using specific general adjustments to the spine or extremities to remove pressure off affected nerves. We may also incorporate passive therapies. These passive therapies may include electrical muscle stimulation, heat or ice, laser therapy, or even massage therapy. These are designed to decrease muscle spasms and to reduce inflammation in the body so that the adjustments stay in place better. Once you begin feeling better, we will move into stabilization of the spine or extremities. We will continue the adjustments at this time, but now we will incorporate specific exercises called active therapies to, to stretch tight muscles, tighten loose muscles, and begin stabilization of the spine. Once your symptoms have reached maximum improvement for your condition, we may discharge you from active care, but we continue to recommend that you come in periodically to make sure your spine keeps its corrections. This is called maintenance care. Obviously, adhering to the recommendations of your doctor is essential for a complete recovery. When needed, we utilize the DRX 9000 True Non-Surgical Spinal Decompression System. You can see it pictured here. In this particular picture, the person is receiving lumbar decompression. In this picture, the person is set up on a head harness and they're receiving cervical decompression. Decompression of the intervertebral discs help achieve pain relief associated with a multitude of disc problems, including herniated and protruding discs, degenerative disc disease, posterior facet syndrome, and bulging discs. The theory behind spinal decompression is when you're lying on the table and the body's in a completely relaxed state, unlike other types of traction or inversion, we begin to apply these decompressive forces which spread the vertebrae apart. This, of course, will relieve pressure on the nerves and the discs, but even more importantly, it will reduce the pressure and allow the disc herniated fluids to begin to be vacuumed back in. This is one of the only types of therapies that can reduce the size of disc herniations, and by doing so, can give a lot of relief to the patients with these problems. We have some additional services offered at Gonset Physical Medicine, which I'd like to review with you now. The first of these is massage therapy. Our highly trained massage therapists offer light touch and deep tissue or sports massage based on your preference and on your doctor's recommendations for your particular condition. We utilize a digital foot scanner to analyze the arches of the feet to determine the need for orthotics or what we call spinal pelvic stabilizers. These not only correct imbalances of the structures of the foot and can alleviate problems like plantar fasciitis, hill spurs, bunions, etc., but can help with knee pain, hip pain, and of course can help balance the pelvis and correct altered spinal curvatures. We have weight loss and detoxification plans available as well. If you are having problems losing weight, then let us guide you with your weight loss goals. We offer a very customized approach to weight loss and detoxification. We focus on the cause of weight gain and metabolism issues to recommend a weight loss and detoxification protocol designed specifically for your individual needs. We also have a program to treat neuropathy symptoms. If you're experiencing any of the symptoms listed on this slide, you may have neuropathy. In this case, a specific program may be recommended which will address the underlying cause of your symptoms while helping to alleviate your symptoms directly. We also offer functional medicine evaluations. Functional medicine focuses on the patient and not the symptom. We are looking for the underlying cause of your disease, including problems like high blood pressure, high cholesterol, diabetes, and irritable bowel syndrome, among others. 
We consider each person's biochemical individuality and may recommend specific lab tests to get to the bottom of your problems. Speaking of lab tests, we offer a multitude of these, including blood work, which can be drawn here at our office. Other tests may include kits, which can be taken home and performed. In each case, a full report will be reviewed with you and recommendations for changes in your lifestyle, diet, or supplementation may be made to correct the underlying cause of your problems. Speaking of supplements, we offer a large range of professional line products to help relieve your pain, inflammation, muscle spasms, and balance your body chemistry, or just to keep you healthy. If you're like most people, you don't consume your daily dose of vitamins and minerals, let alone experience their valuable benefits. Nutrient IV therapy is a safe and effective way to receive natural vitamins, minerals, and amino acids directly into the bloodstream. Each nutrient IV infusion session enhances your energy, improves your overall mood, and helps prevent future health conditions caused by stress, malnutrition, and even dehydration. We also offer naturopathic medical consults. Our naturopathic medical doctor is available for a multitude of medical services. If you have any questions regarding these services, feel free to talk to our front desk and they will give you a list of what is available for you. Regenerative medicine services are provided to help restore worn out spinal joints, hips, knees, elbows, shoulders, ankles, and even wrists. We utilize cutting edge technology, including stem cell and prolotherapy to restore damaged joints. Your doctor may recommend some of these services to you during your report of findings. Of course, if you have any questions regarding any of the services we provide, please feel free to ask your doctor if they may be right for you. Again, I'd like to welcome you to Gonstead Physical Medicine. I hope and expect that you are going to respond well to your treatments here, and just ask that when you do, you let others know of your experience. Unfortunately, there are a lot of people out there who do not know about or understand the benefits of chiropractic care, maybe even some of your own friends or family members. So please share your great experiences with them. They will be glad you did. We'll see you soon at your report of findings.